So the vertical sleeve gastrectomy uh, is a part of the duodenal switch operation, which is something that we've been doing actually for uh, nearly eight years at our uh, medical center. And we're the uh, only center in the, <clears throat> in the region uh, doing the duodenal switch. The vertical sleeve gastrectomy um, is a removal of the outer 85 to 90 percent of the stomach. So the stomach goes from being basically a, a medium-sized bag, if you will, to really a, a long, narrow tube. Uh, and by doing so, um, the operation is thought to work by, to some extent, restricting the amount of intake that the individual uh, can take because their stomach is significantly reduced in size. Um, it also seems to have an effect uh, with regards to appetite because you know one of the concerns when you look at a picture of some of these operations is that well, if you're restricting <clears throat> the size of the stomach, but the person is still hungry, won't that be a, a, a bad thing? But interestingly, these patients actually have a significant reduction in their uh, hunger with the operation. There are some other factors that, that seem to play a role in terms of how these operations work. There are certain hormones that uh, are released in the stomach and the intestinal tract that also play a role in hunger and appetite and so forth and the sleeve gastrectomy seems to uh, um, alter those hormones and that might uh, be a part of the way in which the operation um, works. One of the uh, uh, features of the vertical sleeve gastrectomy is that it does not change the direction or the routing of food as it passes through the stomach and then the remaining part of the intestinal tract. And so from a technical standpoint, there is no malabsorption associated with the surgery. By malabsorption, what we mean is that there's not a portion of the small intestine or stomach that's bypassed by the operation, or there's not any uh, diversion of digestive fluids made by the pancreas or the liver uh, in terms of mixing with the food uh, further down in the intestine. Um, and that way, um, you know, medications and, and nutrition uh, with the vertical sleeve gastrectomy are absorbed essentially normally. And so, you know, one of the areas that we think uh, this operation may play a, 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 a greater role is in individuals, for example, who uh, may be too obese to undergo transplant operations for their kidney and liver and so forth. You know, for those patients, you don't want to give them an operation that might change the way they absorb immunosuppression medications after transplants, and so the sleeve gastrectomy might be a good option there. But uh, from a um, uh, locally and, and national and even international perspective, the sleeve gastrectomy is something that's actually being done much more commonly now as a standalone operation. It was initially described, as I mentioned before, as part of the duodenal switch operation. Uh, but more specifically, as a standalone operation, it was initially used uh, in very high-risk patients undergoing duodenal switch in an effort to try to distribute the risk of the operation uh, over two separate operations uh, separated by a period of nine months to a year and a half. And that's how we actually started uh, offering the, the vertical sleeve gastrectomy uh, back in 2002 for our very high-risk uh, um, patients. Over time, as we've gotten experience with the duodenal switch, the need to separate the operation into the two operations uh, has become much less, but from time to time we still uh, um, perform the operation that way. Um, there is now some fairly reasonable uh, um, evidence uh, available that the weight loss and the durability of the weight loss with the sleeve gastrectomy is uh, comparable, if not even a little bit better, than with the adjustable gastric banding procedures. Uh, and it may be a little bit more effective uh, with some of the obesity-related medical conditions. And so the way I see the vertical sleeve gastrectomy heading in the future is it's probably going to um, um, perhaps replace the adjustable gastric banding operation. In terms of the procedure itself, uh, how does it compare to the other options in terms of how long it takes, recovery, that sort of thing? Sure. So, as with the other operations, uh, uh, these operations are done laparoscopically. Uh, the operation itself takes about an hour to an hour and a half, um, a little bit longer than a, a adjustable gastric banding, 
a little bit shorter than a, a gastric bypass, which is about an hour and a half to two hours, uh, and uh, shorter than the duodenal switch, which, because it's a more complex operation, is typically more on the order of uh, three to four hours. Um, the stay in the hospital is typically one to two days uh, after the operation, uh, and many of our patients actually go home the day after surgery. And are there any disadvantages to the, the sleeve procedure versus the others? Well, I think that um, at this point in time, we don't have a great amount of long-term data and results of the operation. There are some pretty reasonable studies now that are starting to show five-year outcomes that are looking quite good. And, um, you know, certainly we don't want to necessarily jump on a bandwagon just because something becomes popular. And to some extent, uh, you know, we've been a little bit uh, uh, careful about adopting the vertical sleeve gastrectomy as a primary uh, or standalone bariatric operation because there really wasn't a lot of information and data available for the longer term uh, outcomes. But now that we're getting those and we're seeing that they're working well, it's a natural fit for us to do it. And, you know, obviously we have a tremendous experience already doing the operation when we do the, uh, uh, the uh, duodenal switch. I think one of the other things that it's important to keep in mind with the uh, vertical sleeve gastrectomy is that we do use a stapling device to, to do the actual um, stomach resection part of the operation. And any time that you disconnect or, or remove a part of uh, the stomach, you know, if those staple lines don't heal properly, um, there can be a leak. Um, now, leaks are very rare. They happen less than 1% of the time. Uh, but I think that it would be accurate to say that the risk of leaks with a sleeve gastrectomy is probably about the same as the risk of a leak with a gastric bypass. Less than 1%, but um, still there.